Hey guys, I know it's a, a Wednesday now, officially, and I haven't done a raw reaction. I know a lot of you are pining for it. This is something called a super reaction. I'm going to do a reaction of Smackdown, which ended around an hour ago, and Raw as well, which happened on Monday, so all was good. I was going to post this earlier, but I had to make sure I got all the matches right, plus, with this whole uh, Matt Hardy suicide thing, apparently, that's just going around, I have been trying to get my, my head around the possible ways it could be real, not real, is it happening, you know, it's, it's been slowly apparent, because I only found that out the minute Smackdown ended, so, I'm just, literally, I was just trying to find some more info, but, yeah, I'll, I'll, if anything happens, I will put a video up as soon as can about that, but this is not about that, this is about Raw and Smackdown, this is the super reaction, because like Cena said at the start of Smackdown today, are you sure this is the right day, guys? It's Tuesday, night Smackdown, whatever the hell, I don't know. But first, about Raw. Opening promo between Triple H and Nash, fantastic. I thought it was a, fant it was a great way of exposing everything in this, and the post with the match, Nash with Punk. I wasn't really up for it, but it would be a great thing to happen. Ziggler versus Orton was a fantastic match, showed off Ziggler well, he was a great seller, fantastically shows his ability, and despite Orton, I wouldn't call it a burial, because at least Ziggler put up a fight, for one. But, yeah, I found it quite a good match. Cena Henry Christian promo was funny as hell. Sheamus running in, set up a tag match for later in the night. I thought the best line of it, although Cena saying, look, I'm a one you can play in who's looks like he's been doused over with, with spray tan. <laughs> Plus, he also said douchebaggery and anus on television. Well done, Cena. Although douchebaggery was censored, that still doesn't stop him the fact that he said it. Well done. Well done. Punk versus Miz, absolutely awesome match. Very physical and intense match with a lot of lot of near falls, lot of lot of counter holds, lot of submissions and grapples. Fantastic, great stuff. And I have to admit, I was a bit disappointed that a DQ spoiled this, but it did show that our truth and Miz are a solid team now. Possible tag team champions in the future? I do not know. But a good thing is Nash came out and increased the storyline by booting Punk in the face. That's all good, isn't it? <laughs> Swagger vs. Sin Cara, I believed, was a bit shit. It was a throwaway match that didn't really contribute to anything at all, and only made the Guerrero management storyline look even worse than it actually is, which actually is pretty shit. This Hunicio as Sin Cara thing, I've been negative because I love the original, of course. But the fact that I turned the sound off, and you can, because I don't want to hear Cole commentating, of course, because I hate him, um, and I could see and sense how bloated, slow, and overweight this guy is. Because he's not as lightweight as you expect Sin Cara to be. A cruiser, a light heavyweight, a light cruiserweight. Even lighter than that, maybe even a featherweight for all I care. And it just didn't feel that the moves he was performing and taking were that of a cruiserweight. It was extremely weighted about it. You could feel it on the screen, and I was disappointed by that. Kingston Bourne versus Otunga McGillicutty was another crap match. The tag team title rematch does not last two and a half minutes. The only good thing about it was Otunga in Lawler's face afterwards, because that sets up a possible feud. I can say this, right? If Jerry can help Otunga get better as a rain ring performer, I'm all for it. Because Otunga, as you people know, is one of my mo least favourite wrestlers, because he literally has not done very well at it since he debuted. But he is getting slowly better. I think teaming with... Joe Hennig, Michael McGillicutty, has definitely worked in helping perfect his wrestling style a bit. If Lawler can help make it better, I'm all for it. Brie Bella vs. Kelly Kelly, copy and paste the throwaway match comment I've already said twice. I will say one thing though, one thing of interest, because as you know, Beth Phoenix and Natalia Neidhart are trying to get rid of this fair, this princessy, Barbie-like dull diva that you see nowadays, just coked in makeup and looking nice, and come out in there and don't really do very good wrestling, right? You'd expect that. Uh, the thing is, they cut away to a link on a screen, and they looked exactly like what they're trying to destroy, all dolled up and everything. I thought, hmm, is that confusing? Or well, the best part, is that showing a storyline that could be going on its way down already? Because that is a cock-up. 
by not by not just the, the, the part of the creative team for even suggesting this uh, that as an ideal, but it's also a screw up of the makeup and wardrobe department in the WWE because that just completely takes the integrity and seriousness of this storyline for me out of the window because you look at the legitimacy of what I've just described and you go, there's no way <laughs> it's ever going to end, is it? To much to my disappointment. I'll get back to that on Sunday, I'm sure. I'll get back to describing my hatred for the women's division on Sunday. <laughs> Sheamus, Cena, Henry Christian tag match was very mad. It was too short. Having the faces win doesn't build up the credibility of the heels very well. Triple H, though, cancelled the Nash match and put himself in the match with Punk, which is a bit unexpected. And a good ending to an otherwise lopsided Raw, because the first hour was great. Second hour, shit at best. I'm telling you. It's annoying that a Raw could have one side great, one side crap. But then again, after the Raw of su Raws of such high quality, even on the Divas' perspective in the last couple of weeks, it's very disappointing. So, give a rating, D. I wouldn't go any lower that, but that first half of the Raw saves it. Now we've got on to SmackDown, and if I'm talking too fast, please do say so in the comment section. I'm tired, it's four, four, quarter past four in the morning, I'm trying to get through this as best I can. And it's not easy. Yeah, exactly. If people are watching this and haven't done these videos before, try doing it yourself. It isn't easy. I tell you that for sure. Trying to fit everything into 15 minutes. <laughs> and thus, we started off with Barrett versus Cena, which was a main event, apparently. Very, very short. Buried Barrett some more. And I don't like that. I love Wade Barrett. I don't want him buried anymore. The mic work beforehand was very good, though. Cena made, made a lot of wrestling references to old wrestling federations and also to the XFL, which were comically paused. Uh, Rodriguez came out after he wanted Del Rio out there. Rodriguez said he isn't going to be here. He was saying, I'd better Del Rio. And actually, even funnier, Cena stating, this is like, uh, like basically the sound of cats throwing up and having sex at the same time. Don't know how the hell you know that, Cena, but you end up punching Rodriguez for all that's worth it. Good on you. Barrett stating how much she, how much he's going to beat down Cena and remembered how much he dominated over him in last year, which was good. Good to know referencing past storylines. I always love that. Good stuff. Although Barrett being buried after he says he's going to beat, beat Cena up is worthless to build up a heel and then just completely trounce him. The Black Hole Slam bit was the only bit that was really interesting for Barrett. He didn't do much. Seeing Cara versus Daniel Bryan next after we heard Mark Henry going about the violence of cage matches. I know what's more violent. Elimination fucking chamber. Seriously, it's not, they're not the most violent match ever. Go to, go to Japan and wrestle one of their matches, Mark. Seeing Cara versus Daniel Bryan. Great, phys great technical match with suicide dives. The springboard usual stuff you see from both guys. Uh, I didn't expect the heel turn at the end. Great stuff. Loved that, actually. I thought, ooh, this is different. Something I didn't expect, and it makes SmackDown a little bit more interesting for me now, doesn't it? Mex the great Mexican surfboard stretch, stretch slash dragon sleeper move by Brian. I was clapping that for about 10 minutes. That was brilliant. That was class. She was a great wrestler when you see one. If you can combine a Mexican surfboard stretch and a bit of a guillotine with a dragon sleeper, it's fucking incredible. Um, I'll tell you now, unlike last night, this new scene Cara proved he can wrestle. I was wrong, and I sincerely apologise for the comment I made earlier, because he shows he can, but I think it depends on the opponent, because Brian can make anybody go do good, so we'll be all for that. Divas tag match, the contemporary match, the, the usual match you'd expect. Shit. <laughs> it was missable and very short. Aksana is a terrible announcer. I could do better. Fuck it. I can do better because I, well, I basically say so because I believe I have the voice, but that's just me. Phoenix won, pinning Alicia Fox, who wasn't even involved in this entire feud thing. I would have preferred her pinning Eve Torres, but, yeah, Lord knows. The fantastic, next up with the fantastic contract signing by Triple H and CM Punk, getting the real emotion of what they want from each other as well as what they want from the product and everyone else. It was great, so intense. Punk just resonated with it. And if you didn't resonate with Punk after this, then your head must be somewhere else, because he was saying oh, how much I'm still a fan, and what I want is change. We all do want change, I know that for sure. And it made me feel happy, because I know I'm a giant fan of Punk, and you all know it, but 
in all fairness, it, that just sums up everything. That not just uh, the IWC would want is change, but also makes you think, yeah, I want to get behind this guy now. I know if you don't like CM Punk, you've got your reasons, I'm fine with it, but still, it just reinforces my point of how good Punk is. Great part, part though, Punk got some of a Nash when he came out. Triple H even got thrown down as well. Very intense stuff. Loved it. Best part of the night for me, without a shadow of a doubt. Because this, this is keeping me interested. I want to see what Nash does, because he also he came out with the um, NWO theme for both segments on Raw and SmackDown. So that makes me... I've been hooked on that theme since I heard it. <laughs> I'm, I've never been a big WCW fan, so don't even expect me to talk about that for five minutes. <laughs> Sheamus vs. Carly, bit of a throwaway match, despite Sheamus making Carly look good a bit, which is actually a good thing, you know, so beat down by Ma Mahal and Carly after a DQ finish. I just hope this isn't Sheamus' next feud, because that's a waste for your second biggest face on the brand. And then finally, the Orton-Christian cage match. Great cage match, although I did expect Orton to win, no one expected him to lose, but I didn't expect the match to last as long as it did. So... We can all be help thankful for that. Good. I was expecting an RKO off the top of the cage. Not off the top rope. But then again, I can't get everything in this PG world, can I? Great beat down by Henry to close the show. It was an okay smackdown. Overall, I thought it was good. But at the same time, it was great. Mixed with meh. Much like Raw. So I'd, give it, I'd probably give it the same rating, but a bit less. D minus, maybe? It wasn't the best in the world, but I'll take, give and take what good I can get from SmackDown this week. It's the first SmackDown I've watched. Hmm. First SmackDown I've watched in three weeks. And it's okay-ish. It's not abominably shit, but that's why putting the Raw guys on SmackDown may be a good thing after all. As long as you don't bury the SmackDown guys, like Barrett, then we're fine with it. Okay? So overall, this week of... Major WWE programming has come off okay, and I'm I'm actually happy for that because I was I was a bit worried thinking they were gonna everything was gonna go downhill. So this this idea of making them super shows each week is a piece of bullshit. Call them Raw, call them SmackDown. If you're gonna have all the brand extension end, that's fine with me because more guys get coverage on either show now. You can just put some people on SmackDown and some people on Raw, and then interchange each week. Each guy gets his placing. If not, superstars can fill up with more talent, so that's good enough. And you know what? If it if it proves to be a problem where Raw guys go over SmackDown guys, then I think that will be a stupid idea. And guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, it's taken me a couple of days to get it on, but yeah, my tinnitus has been fucking up hugely, my eyes are feeling weird, I've got a headache and drowsiness all through, and that's the reason why I didn't get my video put up on Monday, Tuesday morning, so, yeah. I'll tell you now, guys, I will, I'll put this video up, and I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning hoping I can keep up an idea on this Matt Hardy situation, because it is quite serious. I don't know what's going on at this point, I will put a video up as soon as I get more news, and I will see you guys on, actually, to be honest, I'll see you guys later today anyway, because I've got it in the news, of course. So I'll see you guys there for that. If you haven't pressed the subscribe button, go ahead, it's right up there. More videos will be coming soon. Comment section if you want to talk about Raw, Smackdown, or anything else. Talk about it. I've been Queen Crazy, you've been people watching, voice of the new generation right here, and I will see you later today. Cheers.